The following program shows real people taken into custody by Dallas SWAT. They are presumed innocent until proven guilty. This is my kid. <laughs> Under my protection. The most critical thing on this is being prepared for any eventuality because failure is unacceptable. Obviously, it's concerned that they have all these weapons. So that's what we do. Hey, little baby, come here. Come here, little baby. Oh, man, it's bad. Barricade suspect. Arthur Davis. Suspect is inside. Grenade to ground running. The turn is running higher. Strapped metal to my back. sitting in a, a mock or simulated entry drill. When you're going in the door, we don't, don't pick the first target you see. It's easy on the first guy. He goes to wherever he wants to go. Everybody else, read and react off him. Eyes and ears in place. Oh, open the door, open the door, move. Oh, oh, yeah. Go, I'm gonna give you instruction. Do what I tell you to do, okay? I've been on SWAT for 14 years. I'm on the entry team, which means that uh, I'm one of the door kickers. We go inside and we secure the place. Third guy gets up there. We're up. Move. One of my ancillary jobs over here is, is training. You know, I enjoy that aspect of it. I enjoy the teaching aspect of it. Pulling the door like your two teams coming together, mating up with another guy and going in. Because you never stop learning. Right? We've had guys that have been over here for 20, 22 years, and, and they never stop learning. Because uh, there's, there's always some other challenge that we, you come across. These shots right here are going to represent a hostage shot, uh, what we call a 5% shot, to where you're only going to get a portion of the suspect's head hiding behind a hostage. Fire! The most critical thing on this is be mentally, physically, and tactically prepared for any eventuality. It's a warrior spirit. It's a warrior mindset. And that's, that's what each one of us has to have. We're, we're talking about having a team attacking either here or wherever, if they see a doorway, attacking that doorway so we can hit things from both levels. We just received our information from the narcotics officers on the intel on this next hit. The suspect that we're running on here, allegedly, he's a, a manufacturer and distributor of methamphetamine. Its uh, street name is Speed. And we know this guy's got a propensity for violence because he's been arrested and weapons charged. Especially in light of the fact that we've lost uh, two officers in the area and then one officer shot. In the past uh, three weeks, we're, we're a little bit sensitive about this issue right now, so. The weapons are here. She's the knives. The, the desk, and it's over the top of the desk, right? OK. He's, he's a speed freak. He's those, one of those guys that'll stay up for three days in a row, you know, with, doing what they call tweaking. You know, what the bad thing about that is it makes him extremely paranoid. So that's a bad combination for us. Um, big concern for us is there's a lot of trap doors that we've, we've discovered uh, between the trailer here where he stays and this large outbuilding. So and we know he's got a trap door in a, in a back closet. He's done a lot of fortification underneath his trailer. He's made a lot of adjustments around the exterior with backhoes and things like that. So we're, we're gonna, kind of curious to see what he's done. We can never have too much intelligence on these things. We're putting Scott up in the helicopter to get some real-time uh, aerial looks at this thing. I can get movement in the front yard so there's people outside. It'll be kind of difficult because we can't get a car in there. This location is kind of in a rural area, so it'd be real exposed to drive into it to uh, get a close up. You got it? Uh, these guys are pretty, uh, pretty hinked up right now, so we're going to try and keep our distance with the helicopter. Did you get some pretty good footage of it? One of our main concerns is that we don't have enough foliage to be able to put teams covertly behind the location. If he gets out, if he sees anything coming from the front of the road and it's a pretty good drive into this location, then he could be on our perimeter. The way it sounds, especially with the backhoe, he's got a little un I underground feel... bunker. We just we need to rock this guy's world and take away any fight that he has, disorient him to the point where he can't fight. He doesn't have the ability to fight. Get the dope off the street, get the bad guys off the street, and do it as safely as we can.
Nice and tight. I'm a sniper. I've been in SWAT 11 years. My goal in training as a sniper is to make sure that my rifle and I function together as one, that I can lay down behind it every time and, and feel it the same way. We practice for the worst case scenario, and that being having to take a hostage shot. The better snipers aren't just the ones that are very, very accurate, but they're the ones that can shoot under stressful conditions. Our target is actually this, this eye. That's where I was targeting it, so I'm, I'm a little bit left. The heat just today has pulled everything up on me. But the heat affects our bullets, and the cold affects our bullets. Uh, last time we were shooting out here was cold when we were shooting, remember? Right, right. And our bullets were a lot different. I have a daughter named Brittany. 17 today. My birthday is one week from hers next week. So when she was born, she was a birthday present. Turned out to be this gorgeous little girl. Well, she's the love of my life. She's fantastic. You'll get to meet her tonight. She's a ball. And she's a beauty. Glad I'm a sniper. <laughs> says possible barricaded person. We're going to head that way and be close by so we can uh, deploy it as necessary. A burglary occurred where a number of AK-47 assault-type weapons were taken. They followed the car to the location. The car is parked in a separated garage off of the residence. The suspect is supposedly inside and hasn't been seen leaving. So we go down about two blocks. Uh huh. That's about two blocks down. And as you approach. Okay, you'll see a small door here, but a huge window here. Suspect is wanted multiple times. He has a lot of warrants out for him. So the potential for him being dangerous is a, is a little bit higher. Due to the fact that he does have all these assault weapons, we'll probably surround this place, and uh, the negotiators will call him out. If that doesn't work, then we'll st step up the process and use some gas or other methods to move it along. Obviously, it's concerned that they have all these weapons. But that's what we do. This is a gun they use in Iraq. This is M16 Colt Commando. It comes equipped with a scope, a light mount on it, and a collapsible stock. Okay. It has a magazine with a 30 round capacity. We use this for entry or perimeter. We'll be very careful on how we go up and how we approach it and what we do. Cause I gotta go home and see my little girls tonight. We're not gonna mess that up, are we? This is the APC, the armored personnel carrier. It's equipped with a turret up above. Also, it has rifle ports on the side of the vehicle. We'll carry an entry team or a perimeter team up to the location in a safer manner. Go back in. Go back in. Lock your gate. We've got guys on all sides of the house set up as a perimeter. And we've got guys staged in the neighbor's house watching it also. Got a female peeking out, sir. Female peeking out. Ma'am, come to me. Come to me. Ma'am, come to me. Come to me. Come here. Vamos. Senorita. Aquí. Aquí, vamos. 
We're being told that this suspect may only speak Spanish, so that's going to make it a little bit more difficult. Come to me! Come to me! Senor! Aquí! Listo! Aquí! It's okay. It's okay. The one came out of our suspect house. The other one was in the yard. They say they're the parents of the suspect. Mm -hmm. That's a suspect vehicle, the white one. Mm -hmm. Possibility could be in there too, I guess. I mean, parents say that they're, that that there's that he's their son, but he's not here, so we don't know if they have you know the need to lie to us. But um, sometimes a lot of people don't tell us the truth. Come on, come on, least all sing. That's okay. Come out with your hands up to your right. Over here. Over here. You speak English? Anyone else inside? Okay, come down. Do we know uh, their ages, or are we talking about uh, three years like and three months? The only problem is there's kids in there. Uh, just to catch you up, uh, three adults came out of the place, and they're claiming that there's a three-year-old and a three-month-old inside. I would restrict certain uses of our some of the things in our toolbox. So we'll take out the flashbangs and the gas, and we'll go to a more direct approach, maybe breaking some windows, making some noises. Hey! Hey, little baby! Hey, little baby, come here! Come here, baby. Right now they got a small child coming out the, uh, the baker side on the other side. Come here, Oh, man, this is bad. Mama's over here! Mama's a key! Bring the mom up here. Bring the mom. All right, get back on your gun. Back on your gun. That little kid came out on the porch and he won't come to us because he's afraid. He's, a, he's scared of us. I'm surprised that the grandparents would come out and leave the children in the house. It's kind of odd. Usually, the, usually that's the first thing they'll protect is their children. They'll bring them out. We can get that ATC off to that truck. Yeah. We can get it. But I hate to just go out there and make it. If that APC coming back, why can't we just pull that APC up behind that uh, Silverado right there and we'll pick the kid up ourselves? All right. That sounds good. We're, we're ready. Move it up, Yellow Sandro. So Kelvin and I are going to watch the house while the mom gets the baby, and then we'll move back. As we go up with the APC and the shield, our concern is making sure the child is safe primarily, and secondarily is making sure the guy doesn't shoot us from inside the house. We have to be wary that we have cover on the house and get the child at the same time. safe now he's outside here with us but there's an infant inside and we don't know if the suspects in there or not the two-year-old came out the, we still have a seven-month-old in there but of course we're not we're not sure if there's anyone else in there the actual suspect so it's looking like we're gonna have to slow search it without being able to use gas, mainly because of, uh, you know, the child being in there and us not knowing where the child is. Searching the place, making sure that there's nobody hidden in their crawl space, nobody hidden under the ground, under the floorboards, closets. It would change the whole situation if he got on and started um, saying that he was gonna harm one of the children or that he took them hostage or something like that. Okay. 
the investigators will follow up. Uh, hopefully he left uh, some kind of evidence at the scene and to where they'll be able to still make a case, but uh, he, he wasn't there at the time. Nobody was hurt. You got to go in and do what they do. And uh, we'll catch this guy another day. Is he going to be OK? OK? The cutie is, huh? I'm glad you're all right. We'll see you all later. OK. Good. We're home. Safe and sound. Time to go call my wife and tell her everything's OK. Hey, honey. Hey, how you doing? I'm fine. It went well. Everything's OK. It went, it went like clockwork, babe. I just want to give you a call and tell you I'm all right. OK? okay? I love you, baby. It's my daughter, Brittany's 17th birthday, and to celebrate the occasion, the three of us, myself and Brittany, and her little sister, Gabrielle, are going to dinner. One of Brittany's favorite places, the Mongolian barbecue. It's her 17th birthday. Yep. Thank God I'm in SWAT, because <laughs> she has a lot of guys calling her. It's a birthday girl, 17 years old today. So on the back of my badge is a picture of her. What? 18 months old. It's kind of threadbare, but every time I think about that badge and she's there. And this one I keep in my car. Appreciate it. it looks great. Woo! All right. Good hit. I'm always worried that he's going to like come home with a shot in the chest or something like that, but he always comes home fine. Boys he's actually been pretty good about. But I gotta be home at 11 every night. I don't know, he's still a cop. You're not gonna be a police officer, are you? Maybe. What kind of police officer? Swat. What's chick chick mean? <laughs> you don't even know, it's a gun. Dad! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> If you want to bring, if you want to bring guys and just breach, breach your windows and go through your uh, hold cover like a vehicle assault, you can do that. Right now, we've received all the information that we're going to get on this place. We've got, we've got the intel from the undercover officers in here. Uh, we've got our aerial photos, and we've got our uh, real-time look at the place from the helicopter. So now we're just breaking up into different cells, and we're getting everybody's individual and team plans down and assignments down. I want disruption to come through okay. here, and I want them to take containment on this, mm -hmm. and I need somebody to cut off any runners coming this way from this trailer. The problem we're going to have with this operation right here is containing it. Uh, we, it's going to be very manpower intensive, so we've got to be able to attack all the objectives we need to attack and secure it because we know the guy's a tunnel rat. We know he's going to try and squeeze his way out of here. The thing we want to avoid is him being able to get to a position where he can defend himself and, and, and arm himself. Uh, it's a warrant for methamphetamines. Our primary suspect, he's 5'8", uh, soaking wet, uh, 150 pounds probably at best. He's your speed freak. There's a good chance he hasn't slept for days, or if he crashes, then he could be asleep the whole entire time. My assignment on this is going to be, uh, I'm basically one of the entry team members. It's probably one of the easier jobs in this because I got a real definitive, real definitive goal of just go inside and secure it. Just be advised that inside this bedroom, as soon as you come through the door on the wall, he's got like swords, throwing stars, knives. Uh, also, uh, there has been uh, some communication with informants in the past that he's interested in explosives. With that being said, I want you to understand the guys that are searching, be very careful on what you're, you're knocking over and throwing around in this house because you don't know if he's set up a booby trap inside here. So. Or Potential for compromise is huge on this, so we're going to try and sneak up along tree lines on this and, and see if we can't get on top of them before they even know we're there. Let's move out to our target pretty quick because we don't want to waste any daylight. The biggest fear that any tactical operator has is not being able to perform and, and resulting in team failure because failure is unacceptable. It has to be unacceptable because there's so much that hangs in the balance if we do fail. Three dogs. Listen up, guys. You hear the dogs? Rottweiler and a couple of other dogs that are at the location. That's all we're getting. People out front. People at this car. 
Are you got somebody in the car? These guys are your white supremacist group. Um, yeah, you go inside and there's swastikas hanging everywhere, rebel flags hang hanging everywhere. Well, we got the uh, main suspect. There's a lot of paraphernalia in there where they've been cooking dope. Uh, the primary search is done. We're still doing some secondary, some crawl spaces, some under the trailers. We're just kind of looking at nooks and crannies to see what we can find. Uh, this is kind of a unique in the fact that the guy was actually building a bunker. It's, it's uh, steel reinforced concrete walls. The reason they do it is so they have some place to go hide from the cops. You know, if, if they, your, your survivalists and your white supremacists are all kind of the same type, they, they basically feel like no one should be able to touch them. And so that's, I think, why they build these, these type of fortifications. They could be in this for a long time, depending upon what kind of staples they have inside. You have to use a lot of water in your, in your lab, your meth cooks. Here, it looks like he's running, he's running a separate uh, water heater. Strange gigs. To be honest with you, it may look trashy and it may look uh, disorganized, but I guarantee you he knows each and every dope hole he's got in this place. He knows where all of his guns are stashed. So much of it is probably going to be buried out here, so the chance of us finding a lot of his staples are, uh, are minimal. We're just happy to arrest these guys and get them off the street. The potential for this thing in, in another year to be a force to be reckoned with is, is very likely. Pills, new scales. New scales. Police scanners. Police. And they had a bunch of needles. As long as we can maintain the superior manpower, superior firepower, superior tactics against these guys, you know, we're going to win the battle. Hey, baby, you having fun? OK, Dad's still working for a little while, all right? Like two more hours, and then I'll call you, OK? All right, Angel. I love you. Bye-bye. Uh, this warrant we're about to execute is allegedly by a crack house. It's a real active house. Uh, we have two CI buys of crack cocaine at this location. What they're stating is the suspect went to the back room to uh, get the crack cocaine and came back and served the uh, CI. If they're cooking it, you know your suspects are going to be there. Somebody's got to watch the cook while the other guy sells. It's a stone brick house with uh, dark green trim around it. Our primary entry point is here on the Alpha 3 door. Alternate is a Charlie 1. You have a driveway that runs along here. You got a, a Delta 1, 2, 3, and 4 window. Uh, we Plan believe. attack is to send Alpha team to the front side of the house. That's my squad. And a Charlie team to the back side. And we're going to breach both doors. And we'll hook up with them on the inside at a link up point. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to say? If not, let's go to work. The thing that stands out to me as a danger single, it just looks like a run of mill hit the door and go in type deal. And uh, those always scare me because I'm afraid guys are going to get complacent. Coming up behind you, Slow Jack. Two alleged drug dealers in there, cooking crack, and uh, being the guardian of a, looks to be about an eight-year-old little boy. 
kid scared to death. You okay? Doing good. Is All right. There? No yeah. boom. All right, you're a tough guy. Pretty tough. We'll take in our team anytime. You got that? You hang in there. He ran from the front door, chucked that pistol in that closet, grabbed the kid, and laid down. He said he was going to protect his son. I was like, if protect, you want to protect your son. Stand at the front door and go. My kid's inside. He, he's laying. He's laying on the floor and he had the kid like this, but he wasn't. He wasn't covering a kid up like you'd expect an adult to do. What do y'all find in there, man? We got crack cocaine. 45 caliber handgun. You definitely have a very tough grandson. This is very impressive. Call me in like 15 years when you need a job, okay? I got one for you lined up. All right. There are two narcotics warrants in the same apartment complex. We're going to hit them both at the same time. We're going after suspected drug dealers. This location has an incidence of high gang activity and drug activity. I think Misty and Tim are going to get in an unmarked van and go by and look at the uh, location and see what kind of information we can gather. We're getting, we're getting inside this covert van, which is an unmarked van. It looks like just your regular old good times van. The van has covered windows, so you can't see inside, but we can see out. And we're going to actually drive by the warrant location and, and take a look. We say, we say stop short of that building right there. Yeah. Hug up on the, the building. Yeah. yeah. It's important that we're in a covert mode. We don't want to alert any of the suspects. Is there any unusual activity out, out in their area? That way, we don't risk losing our greatest asset, and that is surprise. It looks like a good drug house. He's actually selling when we drove by. I went an upstairs and a downstairs, and it didn't look like the, the doors were barricaded. It's really busy. Approaching it may be difficult. Also, one of the guys is going to go up in the helicopter and grab some digital photos of our location and make sure that the way we go in is the best way and we look at possible exit points for the suspects. We can stop right here. You're going to be here for a while. If you want to stop there, take that APC and pull it off right. here. Yeah. Right now, we're going to have a briefing for a drug warrant, a simultaneous hit. There are two warrants in the one apartment complex. One is a stash house or the house they sell from, and the other is a smoke house where they go and smoke it. We're going to hit him at the same time. Uh, be advised, you might confront a whole bunch of people. That's big boy. That's the guy I've been buying dough from. Before, it's supposed to be a stash house, too. That's supposed to be a stash house. Gang members and homicides looking for a suspect inside the location. Uh, the 80s are going to lead up with in an APC. Kristen Del Sandro going to drive that. You're at the bottom of that stairs. You're going to be in this lead vehicle. And get, make sure we get there, all right? All right. My assignment on this is to drive the armored personnel carrier and provide perimeter protection for the entry teams as they make their entry. If I understand you, you're asking whether we want to pop those windows with something other than gas. No, 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 no. The reasoning for hitting these places simultaneous is we can control the evidence, we control all the suspects. If we were to hit one and go to the next one, the, the potential for losing the evidence and losing the suspects is greater. It's going to be a little bit more difficult because things will help be happening in multiple places. That separates your forces right there. Everybody good? All right, let's make it happen. Today's warrant, we will probably deploy anywhere from two to four of these. This is a flashbang, a diversionary device. We use this as a form of distraction, entering hazardous locations. The pin's towards you. You pull the pin out, and you toss an underhand motion through the window. The flash itself and the noise are what make this work. People of Dallas, get off the road. I'm driving this big old piece of metal. We typically don't take the armored personnel carrier on warrants. However, this is a simultaneous warrant. We'll pull the APC in the courtyard. This might be the last point of cover we have when we go on this hazardous warrant. They're 
running, y'all running. Stay out. Stay out. Flashbang land on a couch and it starts a fire. It's an incendiary device that happens. Everybody all right? Hey. Got another one walking. All these people in an apartment is probably only right maybe there, 200 square feet. It's 12 people in a one, in a one bedroom apartment. They were all over the place inside. I understand that they find the. Uh, a weapon or two, they find some rock, rock cocaine, crack, found some marijuana. Got plenty of suspects that were listed uh, on the warrant out of there. It's a Remington 870 shotgun, it's a typical one one's police officers use. Be glad that they weren't able to use that on us going through the door, it's a devastating weapon. And until we figure out who's who, nobody's leaving. If you talk again, you will end up face down on the ground. We'll keep an eye on them once narcotics gets gets a hold of him, talks to him, then we'll decide who gets to go and he gets to stay. These guys knocked it quick, hit it fast, broke the window, surprise was in our favor, and took it down very quickly. It was a, it was a, it was a good, good warrant. I'm done with work, and my daughter Brittany, my 17-year-old, is a top hat dancing and I'm going to go see her dance. Six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, <laughs> two, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, six, four, seven, eight, one. I'll tell you what, they're, for the, five, for the beginning six, of a, seven, learning a dance, they're doing one, very well. Seven, you know what, for years I've been up that high, but I had a, a line attached to me and some Pell gear. She's up that high on the strength of his right arm and her balance. Brittany and Keith, they're running their new dance. So, go. <laughs> Ready? Go. He's a very good dancer. They make great partners in dance. They happen to be boyfriend and girlfriend, too. Eh. That's good. I've known him for probably four years, five years. He's a good kid, a good young man. Keith, does it bother you when I sit here and watch you? No. No? Yeah. Who would, you rather, you? who would you rather have sitting here, my, my wife or me? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, one, two, three, you know, I do like Keith. And Keith knows the rules. The way she leaves is the way she returns. And that's the way she comes back. Hey, Keith, is this the money you owe me for dating my daughter? Just checking. I'm a sniper. And I have a big gun and, and uh, Keith now often asks me about some of the things I do. I don't tell him much other than I practice a lot from 100 yards. <laughs> he says, oh, that's not a good thing. I said, oh, it's fine for you, Keith. You're a perfect gentleman. Don't worry about it. And then smile. Yeah, I'd be home. Bring her home. Yeah. All right. Same way you took her, right? You know what time you have to be home? Yes. All right, I'll see you guys later. event in New Orleans. You know, we're very fortunate we're in a position where we can help the people down there and provide some assistance for all the people that have lost their homes and their families down there. The majority of these people are good, honest, hard-working people. They just got caught up in a bad situation. But uh, the nature of the beast being, there's, there's bad guys amongst them. A lot of their gang members moved up here, and they've got kind of a little turf war going on right now over the drug trade. From what I understand, based on the intelligence that we have, the penitentiaries and the prisons down there, where they started filling up with water, then they were forced to just evacuate them. They opened up the doors and let them all go. They uh, ended up sifting out into the major cities. We know right now, based on good, credible in intelligence, that we've got a major faction of it up here in Dallas. Tomorrow we're going to run a warrant 
on an apartment that FEMA has rented for some of the New Orleans refugees. The complex itself has been well known for drug trafficking, but now we have the added problem of some of the drug dealers from Louisiana and New Orleans area, some of the displaced refugees coming in here and, and slinging dope too, so uh, that's going to add a little different edge to it. The section that we're hitting on this warrant, FEMA owns it. So these occupants in this uh, facility here are your evacuees from Louisiana. Their mindset may be different than what we're used to encountering. For this particular operation, because there's so many folks and so many facets involved, we're going to hit it real early in the morning, catch them by surprise, hopefully. We feel pretty good about hitting at this time of the day that we'll be able to catch them off guard. We're fixing to hit this place at 5.30 in the morning. Uh, that's a concern for me because these are aggressive actors. Their instinct may be to defend themselves, and that's, that's a problem. The ideal scenario on, on this is that Everyone inside gives up. They're compliant with our, with our demands. Uh, no one gets hurt, and we all go home safe. Uh, we want to get the dope off the street. We want to get any weapons off the street. We want the bad guys to go to jail. It's just that simple. Narcotics says there's always a guy sitting here behind the door on a couch. 5'8", 300 pounds, this guy. So as that door opens, he says, you can't see it. You have to physically poke your head here. He expects most of our people to be in the living room. OK. We don't know a lot about these guys. We don't know how many people are going to be inside. We've heard everything from 4 to 12. A minute and a half out. We're definitely going to hit it with everything we've got. Worst case scenario is that we get compromised and we have a big shootout. We want to avoid that at all costs. Looks dark. We got people up top. Side. It was a good operation. You know, we were able to secure everybody without any incident, which is always a good thing. We were compromised on the way up by uh, the suspects looking out the door. You'd think everybody would be asleep at 6 o'clock in the morning, but all 11 of them were awake watching TV. It ain't bedtime yet. That's right. We don't know what, as far as evidence is concerned yet. Narcotics will do a sweep on that in a minute. We generally have a pretty good working relationship with our narcotics division. Um, you know, they're, they're capable of running their own warrants, but they call us up with it's kind of manpower intensive or if there's certain circumstances that don't allow them to run it, heavily fortified, uh, heavily armed, stuff like that, then generally they'll give us a call on that. Uh, it's a fun one. I mean, anytime you have to integrate a lot of assets like we did here and, and coordinate them, it's a good thing. Uh, what we found inside was, uh, as soon as the door came open, was bodies going every direction. There was 11 people inside. Uh, 500 square foot apartment, so it's pretty tight once we got in there with them. There's some big boys in there, too. With the suspects, we'll have to ID who was where. Like this woman right here, I believe she is the kingpin of the operation. Is, it, yeah. is that you? Yeah. You're not the kingpin? No, my mom. All right. OK, what'd y'all find in there in your search? Well, uh, just one small baggie of and uh, the suspect has been selling to the undercover officer, so we've got several warrants on him, so he is going to jail. It didn't go like we planned, but rarely do they ever go like you planned. It's just, that's where you just have to be able to adapt and overcome. And that's, that's the big secret to SWAT, being able to adjust. Yeah, what time? What time is the movie? With Brittany leaving, 
and it's constantly on, on my mind that she's going away to college, that we're at that transition, at one of those transition periods. <laughs> when she was born, I guess it was the, the second day, just grabbed her and I tossed her up in the air about two feet and my wife about died and looks at me and said, what are you doing? I said, this is my kid. I said, this is, she'll always be under, under my protection. Hey, Keith. How you doing? Good, how's, that? how's everything going? Going good. You guys going to the movies tonight? Yeah. You know, I'm nervous about her having a boyfriend. She's still young. However, as much as you can trust a guy with your daughter, I guess he's a pretty good guy. Bye. See you. Drive safe, Keith. Sure will. Right. You know what? There's no more telling her what to do. We've got to trust that we did the right thing and how we raised them. She'll live with whatever decision that she makes. It'll probably be about schoolwork and college. It'll be about boys. I kind of have to bite my tongue and just let her make the decision. Bye, Daddy. Bye, honey. Bye, Bye Gab. Chances are she'll make most of them correctly.